And Gene Felton, a real pro in stock cars of all kinds, is a former champion in the IMSA series and now has won himself some races in the Trans Am as well. Have them here today, Steve. 55 qualifiers at Alcar Lake in this Trans Am race. That's a near record for this long, long respected series that's been running really since 1966. Trans Am 100. Well, Ed, one of the real contenders, Gene Felton, is on the sidelines. It appears as if he's got some engine problems, but Gene has had some concerns about brakes here as well, and especially considering the Darren Brassfield crash that was a result of a brake failure. He talked about brakes and how they related to setting up a car here at Road America. He talked about that with Steve Evans earlier. On a high-speed racetrack like Road America, brakes play a very big part, as Gene Felton is going to show us. Gene? Yeah, this, this is just one, one brake pad. We have two of these on each wheel. In other words, eight of them on the car, and these are monster brake pads. Uh, we have to haul these cars down, as I say, they're 2,700 pounds. We have to haul them down from 180, 190, sometimes 200 miles an hour, down to 20, 25 miles an hour. And cooling the brakes. Well, we have huge vents going into them. We even have water injection on the brakes to keep the uh, rotors cool. And even with all of that, we still have brake failures. That's why you see escape roads at the end of some of these straightaways that we all hope we don't have to use. Well, fortunately, Gene didn't have to use the escape road here at Road America. He's out of the automobile, unzipping his driver's suit because it got plenty hot in that car. It's been hot here all afternoon, and he's going to seek a little coolness here as Steve Evans has gone into the pit area and rounded up Gene's car owner. I'm with Gordy Oftedal, crew chief on Gene Felton's car, and Gordy on our monitor. It looked like the engine blew. Uh, I haven't seen it. I, I don't know what's happened. The radio didn't work. We weren't able to communicate with Gene to find out. The car was running right where we had planned on being. We figured there would probably be a yellow with all these cars in the race. 50 cars is a lot of cars. We felt there would probably be a yellow. We were just running easy, so we'd be able to charge at the end. Well, after a win in Florida and seconds out on the coast, you're certainly uh, the highest placed independent car in this whole series. Uh, and there's a long ways to go. You still got a good shot at it. Sponsor, we could probably win a few, but we really feel good where we're running. I got a good driver. You sure do. Robinson. Finally, Gene Felton has found his way back to the pit area, and Brock is there to talk to him. Gene Felton, a kind of a surprising end. You, you were running with the leaders, but uh, not really making a move on him. Was the car running as well as you expected before it broke? Uh, no, Brock. Was you know, as he might know, might not know. We didn't have any practice this morning. We made about a half a lap this morning to check the chassis, and uh, something happened. So we didn't have any practice. We didn't have time to bed the brakes in. So I started the race with no brakes. And I was cooling. And I was running real nice and easy, thinking I would uh, make a move in about the next five laps. And uh, I was running fifth, I think, maybe sixth, keeping up with the leaders. And all of a sudden, going down the back straightaway, uh, the hand grenade went off. <laughs> I think the crank broke in half, or maybe some rods gave up. So it just, uh, it just with no warning, no oil pressure going down or heat going up or anything, it just flat broke. No, no warning whatsoever. I was reading the gauges, I was watching everything, shifting gears easy, just taking care of the equipment, just without any warning at all that uh, you 